Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. It's 2015. It's nine years of mayhem. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 451. We've been doing this since circa 2006. I can't believe it. And this will be a milestone episode for several reasons. You're seeing the new visuals, guys, if you like that. You know, check out the YouTube if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, but this is the Wrestling Man Show. I'm Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitters in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ready to kick this off, kick off this new year with me as usual. Uh, he was not scared away by the gold uh, uh, mini podcast earlier. Uh, he's Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox at Panel Riot on the Twitters as well. Hi guys, uh, that's true. You may also know me as the uh, I played the uh, the baby in uh, in Ghostbusters too. Um, Sorg, I haven't done anything in my life for nine years except for this. I guess that's that's pretty much it. I've done this for <laughs> nine years. That's it. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. Nothing else. Maybe I've eaten food consistently pretty much every day for nine years. I took wow. a whole year off of masturbation, so that's off the table as well. Oh, wow. That's dedication. That's amazing. That's, true. that's amazing. Also with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, is Mad Mike at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitters. I don't know if I've done anything for nine years. Well, technically, I haven't even done this for nine years. <laughs> technically. I mean, I, I joined a little late. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to think of how long I've actually been here. I know it's more than Eamon and Riz and like and more than Chad and and uh, Doc Remedy at this point. But I think I'm up to seven. Hmm. I think so. we we should look we should look at that. Somebody I check the even... archives. Where's our uh, wrestling mayhem show archivist? We need a wrestling mayhem show archivist actually. So if anybody wants yes. to volunteer for that position, please please do. Um, yes, you need to scour our MySpace pages. Because I wonder. I wonder if anybody still goes back and listens to like the old old archives. Because I remember people God, were doing so. that. Like, what's that? God, I hope so. <laughs> I, hope, oh. I hope not. Who knows what's? Back I there. hope so. Please, come on. I that girl is still in the freezer, Sorg. Oh no! Oh no! She's still in there. <laughs> well, also, in my in my Gmail here, uh, the <laughs> first email that we have from Mad Mike um, is. It is from December of 2008. Oh, wow. Wow. But wow. it is not, I guarantee it's not the first email that we got from you because this was uh, uh, Christmas lyrics. Oh, yeah, because I, I first did um, MySpace messages. That's I right. I that very, very distinctly. <laughs> oh, right, anyways, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, uh, pass the nostalgia. Let's look to the future. And the future, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the man joining us right now, uh, Justin Plummer. How you doing, sir? Am I on? Is this it? Yes, you are on. You're on. You're on the, the camera. Uh, I can't tell, but that's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. Is there a question? Was there a question? We're asking? No, no. I just asked how you're doing, man. Of course, Justin Plummer, uh, as of I don't know days ago, um, is the new owner of the International Wrestling Cartel. That's what I've done for the last nine years. So, so this show has has lasted through three consecutive owners now. See that? Maybe four. We'll see how much I enjoy it. We how much you guys drive me nuts. <laughs> and we'll talk about that. And thanks for joining us, uh, uh, Plumber, for uh, uh, the show. Talk some wrestling. And uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit what's going on at IWC here later in the show. 
Sounds like a plan. All right. Of course, this is, uh, you can join us here live, of course, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Like these fine people over here. No, I'll get the right direction. It's over here in the corner, like Alice Cars, the Riz is in there, a bunch of other people. Matt Carlin's just popping up there as well. Um, you look, we got a chat box. Isn't that awesome? Um, but no, you know, we, we have so much going on in the chat room. I wanted to kind of bring it to the forefront a little bit. Uh, so we got, I, I'm playing with this. We'll see how this format goes. I'd love to have something kind of persistent. Um, but we have this if you're on video, uh, so you, you can you can watch and, and, and throughout the night we'll we'll pop up the chat room so you can check in what's going on uh, in there. And we got a big one too. There's 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 a big Riz. Uh, his name is Amen. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, but of course you can join us. Uh, we are uh, on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. You can find links for all that stuff over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, on I Mayhem mean, Show, on the Twitters as well. Uh, or you can drop us a line, the 412-407-WMS0. Uh, no, that's not the right number. I just mixed my other Google number with this. I'm going to have to fix that. Wow, 412-206-WMS0. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't just change all the graphics today. I'm sorry. First Happy episode New of the New Year. We're already oh. shithoused. <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, we'll, we'll fix that number, but you can still always email us at good times. Good times. Good times at .com. Um And we'll be listening to some of those emails later in the show. I got you there. Um, and, of course, uh, big thanks to our Patreon supporters, uh, our friends from WrestlingRevolution.net or TheWrestlingRevolution.com. And Bo Diggity. Woo! Um, and big ups just because I saw him in the chat room to Juggalo John for sharing drone boning. Go look it up on Google. Uh, so let's get into the show. Don't do it at work. Don't do it do at work. Don't do, 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 it do not work. do that at work. Um, anyways, so something big and foreign happened this weekend. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, amongst people on the show, uh, uh, currently on, Mad Mike is the only one that watched it uh, so far. Uh, great live yes. tweeting late last night uh, as he as he watched the replay. Uh, but uh, we're we're hoping to to solve that and have a, a broader discussion about Wrestle Kingdom Nine with New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, and Global Force Wrestling uh, next week. Uh, and we got a lot of questions coming up in the fan mail uh, later in the show too. But I want to start off just just impressions, uh, Mike, about Wrestle Kingdom Nine and and, and getting this taste of new. Japan Pro Wrestling. Well, um, as I as I said when I did the live tweet, I have never seen New Japan. Uh, I'd never watched it. I didn't know any of the characters. I mean, I ended up knowing some of them just because they're American. Mm -hmm. But um, holy crap! Uh, seems to be the consensus for the show. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, there was they opened it off with a four way tag match, which was mind-boggling like the amount of uh double team moves and the fast tags and all that stuff it's picture the best x division tag match you've ever seen in your life and double it like uh you had guys guys who people know like rocky romero alex kozloff alex shelley the young bucks and um red dragon from um roh but like uh kushida uh, th th there was it was just absolutely balls out. Like, and it didn't last that long, but it seemed like it lasted a lot longer because it was there was so much going on. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wish that they had held that for the middle of the show because that's when Stryker and Jr. got more comfortable with each other. But I mean, it was still a very very fun match to watch. Um, the two main events was uh, Nakamura versus Ibushi. For the IWGP Intercontinental title. And Nakamura is a fucking god. He, he was just... Like, they described him as New Japan's Freddie Mercury slash Michael Jackson. But he kicks your ass. It's awesome. It was fantastic. Um, the main event was uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Kazuchika Okada for the uh, heavyweight title. And, it, it, like, from what I've been able to gather, these two guys are like... The Cena and Randy Orton of New Japan. They're like the Rock and Austin. Like they've had, they've feuded for years. They've had many matches, but it was just fucking fantastic. It was over a half hour. Uh, it was just really, really a lot of fun. But I gotta say, the the match 
Oh, and before before I get to the match that really stood out for me, Kenny Omega, who I've heard of for a long time here in the states, I've never gotten to see him wrestle. He had he had a match for the junior heavyweight title against Raisuke Taguchi, and uh, wow, Kenny Omega is the shit. He's so much fun. Nice. Um, but the, the match that really stood out for me because it was, I, I believe I called it on the Twitter feed. The hossiest hoss fight to ever hoss a hoss. Um, you had Togi Makabe against Tomohiro Ishii for the never open weight championship. These guys beat the fuck out of each other. Like, like they literally just stood next to each other and clotheslined each other very, very hard. Many, many times. And... Oh my god, it was just ridiculous. It was absolutely fucking ridiculous. Uh, but I mean, there, not every not every match was a win. Like I thought there were some matches that kind of were slow, weren't that fun. Ironically, Jeff Jarrett was part of one of those. Uh, I thought the Bullet Club was really cool. There there was actually um, they had the uh, tag team title match that was a lot of fun, even though it had um, like not. Like, I didn't really know who they were. I didn't really connect, but it was a very cool storyline. Uh, there were two guys, uh, Hiroki Goto and Katsuyori Shibata. They had been wrestling uh, tag partners since college, I believe. And they won the tag team titles, which was really awesome. They defeated the Bullet Club. And Carl Anderson is fucking awesome. I had never seen him wrestle before. He wrestles like anyone in wrestling with the last name of Anderson should wrestle. <laughs> So it was very, like, Smash Mouth and everything like that. Um, But, yeah, overall, it was a really, really fun show. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I would put it past something I've seen, like, NXT R Evolution. But that's probably just due to me being more invested in the NXT guys and knowing not that much about the New Japan guys. But it was still a hell of a fun show. Um, Definitely find it on the internet. And Matt Carlin's just posted... What I was talking about with the never champion, with the never championship, and uh, in the chat room. Yeah, but it yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, really, really. I pull chat. it up, and I want to read a couple of these uh, again for for anybody on audio as well. Uh, there's a lot of commentary going on. And again, well, I, I want to have a broader discussion about this next week uh, for sure. And if I get back to the chat room, uh, Amen saying one small disappointment of Wrestle Kingdom: no elaborate entrances like last year's. Um, uh, Riz is down with Kenny Omega and, and Carr says it's like the whole entrance budget got spent on preparations for the pay-per-view presentation thanks a lot Jared so there you go uh, <laughs> from Alex Cars. Uh, so, so, so what do you think this does for you know it, it was broadcast on pay-per-view and, and even you know on this flip tv app you can get you can could connect to a chromecast and you could have still ordered it for 35 bucks there too what do you think this did for uh wrestling in america as far as like exposing a lot of people to to this brand in japan i mean i think it's good exposure i think it's really good exposure because everyone seemingly is talking about it, like and how good it was which it was mm-hmm but I think I still feel there might be a little bit of a disconnect because whenever someone would grab a microphone or they'd show promos, I had no idea what they were talking about. Right. Yeah, that's because I don't speak Japanese. But I think there still might be a little bit of a disconnect there because I, I, like there are a lot of people who just watch wrestling for the straight-up in-ring action. And if that's your deal, New Japan all the way. Go nuts. Have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Me, I, I like the stories a lot, too. Like, I want to be invested in the characters. Right, right. And, and you know, if I don't know what they're... I'm not, I'm not trying to be, like, an Anglophile or anything. I just want to know what the stories are about. And it's kind of... Have have Angl- is it kind of... It sounds like it's kind of that same problem we talk about with indie wrestling, where having that kind of spot show issue, right? Because this is the spot show you're able to jump into, but unfortunately it's their WrestleMania, and WrestleMania has six months of build. You know, yes. um, like so, you're having that kind of kind of bit too. So maybe that's just something you know. And and, and also, American market, to be honest, probably. I don't know what's your impression on this. Maybe an afterthought as far as what they were putting into the show and, and planning it uh, on on the Japanese side. Mm-hmm. So, which makes you gotta think. 
uh, how do our American WWE and TNA shows look to the foreign markets, which is probably very similar to what we experienced. So, um, excellent, excellent. Um, so excited. We'll have more commentary and everything about this. Uh, oh, here, Eamon. Uh, oh, and, and Matt Carlin's on. Uh, Matt Carlin's posted a gif in the chat room. Yes. Of uh, one of the craziest spots of the night. The Young Bucks are being held up for dual doomsday devices, mm -hmm. and they both flipped out of them and landed on their feet, which was just crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nuts. A couple of real quick comments from the chat, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of move on here. Um, uh, uh, Carlin says, the great thing about New Japan is that they're so good at telling stories in the ring that it, it transcends the language barrier, he, he felt. But again, you said getting on the mic doesn't really help too much. Um, and uh, Eamon said the American commentary opened it up to people that haven't watched New Japan before. The response he saw from people who have been watching it for years uh, was that they watched it on New Japan World, the... the, the, the uh, 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 WWE Network like thing. Uh, I know somebody. Uh, I think. I think uh, uh, Tony Garzi in the uh, uh, Facebook group said that he signed up for it. So, uh, but yeah, they they watched it with the Japanese commentary. The people have been watching for a bit. So, so there you go. Yeah, we were definitely the like we were the Spanish announced team when it came to this show. We were very very much the secondary uh, uh, kind of market on this one. So. Did their table get broken? That, that's a good. I was going to ask that. <laughs> it would be amazing if that was that Actually, was the case. There, there were no like weapon spots. No, there there was. I mean, there was some fighting outside, which was really cool because of the way their um, their barricades were set up. Like, there's a little door for the barricade, much much like the uh, TNA Bound for Glory setup. Mm. But uh, the closest thing we got to any kind of weapon was Kenny Omega using his arm as a chainsaw. Legitimately, he like pulled a ripcord on his forearm and then scraped it along <laughs> uh, your guy's face. It was pretty great. All right, with that, let's get let's bring it back to America and let's talk about some stuff WWE's doing. Um, of course, uh, we <laughs> we talked about last night because Raw uh, we had some firings. Uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a little more in the fan mail as well. Uh, uh, but. Uh, Oh, you know, I, 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 I have to mention this part, at least. Uh, I noticed here while I was preparing for the show, of course, uh, those that maybe didn't catch Raw last night or maybe looking at us for a recap here. Again, please go check out the WWE wrap-up on iTunes as well. Uh, we had a, a situation where the authority has come back, have, have uh, uh, punished and fired everybody except John Cena uh, from the Survivor Series, including Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and uh, uh, Eric Rowan. Um, already, they're moved to the alumni page. <laughs> And have very very <laughs> sad face videos uh, on <laughs> WWE.com. Uh, so I like that. it's a nice nice, uh, nice little detail. Yeah, yeah, they're really. I, I'm liking this, and I'm hoping that it, it turns into. You know, it'd be great if if they did sell this for like two weeks, and like they pop up on an indie show somewhere. Like I don't know, maybe an Elizabeth PA. Just saying. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking today it would be fun if they showed up on NXT. Yeah, even that. Even that, just, be like, just just show up, wrestle a few we're matches just gonna, in NXT. We're we just starting. Ziggler, starting wrestle, over. Uh, uh, who cares? Anyone we, from we, NXT? Too bad it's not Adrian still Neville. Saturday Morning Slam, right? <laughs> it's, it's I like, want to see um, Eric Rowan appear on Lucha Underground. There you go. There you go. Make it happen. <laughs> Maybe they'll show up at the DNA tapings this week. You never know, right? It'd right? be really funny if they showed one of them in the crowd. Yes, because because I mean they're taping tomorrow night in New York City. That's right. Vince McMahon could openly just fuck with TNA, and and get Dolph Ziggler front row seats. Honestly, if they could did that. that imagine would, that. That would do more for TNA than it would WWE in the long run. Let's yeah. be honest. No, it wouldn't because no one has that. Destination America. What's, what's that, Justin? <laughs> None of this will ever happen. They won't let them go work indies. The schools it would be as realistic as it would make it. WWE has nothing to gain from working with anybody else. Right. So they're not going to work with anybody else. Right. Your your best move when you're somebody like the WWE and your competition in the area or in the world is so much lower is to just pretend they don't exist. And you keep winning. It doesn't matter what you do or how bad your product becomes. Yeah. It, so it, I think I think that would be great. Like almost like the CM the summer of CM Punk. Yeah. When he popped up a few places and yeah, no, but yeah. you know, for all the smart fans, nobody knew what was actually was it real? Was it was it planned that way? What the hell's going on? And I, that would be awesome if they did that right now. But it would be a stupid move because then they're just giving somebody else legs. I mean, they'd have to go really low if they were going to let them show up at an indie show, like a place that draws one or two hundred people. Yeah, 
would never threaten them at all. Right. And I think I think you first I think you hit on that one because it's, it's not like the 90s where it was like, well, we need somebody to kind of like where the stars are going to come from. They had that with NXT. Plus, when it was just Vince doing that kind of under the table with ECW, it was probably a lot easier than trying to sell that idea to investors. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that definitely. Uh, yeah, I couldn't see that in, in today's environment at all. So, um, but anyways, oh, that's a problem error right there. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, 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 but no, we'll see what they're doing with that. Hopefully they do something fun uh, with this. And hey, you don't see, I, I don't know, they're like the three most entertaining guys that they do matches with. Uh, yeah, well, okay, right. Well, right back is entertaining for all the wrong reasons, let's be honest. But <laughs> um, but anyways, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. At least Daniel Bryan's coming back. We had Edge and Christian last week on all three shows, by the way. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Edge and Christian. You got Dolph Ziggler fired. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. But uh, uh, great to see him wearing a Sh- Sami Zayn uh, shirt there, uh, supporting that there on Raw as well. So, um, speaking of WWE, they uh, have this game coming out. I guess I've noticed they they they've, they've promoted this WWE Immortals for what seems like the last month. Right, you could find nothing about this game. This is the weirdest product launch I've ever seen from something associated with WWE. Uh, but finally, and they're still leaking up. the 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 latest one was posted about three hours ago, artwork wise. Um, but this game's called WWE Immortals. It's by Nether Realm. Uh, I really think if you play the Injustice uh, mobile game, I think that's basically what you're going to get here. They've redesigned. Uh, a, a lot of the uh, WWE stars in how would you explain this style guys? Uh, Mortal Kombat! I guess it's a Mortal Kombat style. They, they do basically look like injustice characters. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no. it's either injustice or like I saw the one that had the Bella twins and they look like Mortal Kombat characters. You're right. Mm-hmm. The only one that doesn't look like Mortal Kombat is triple H because he just looks like triple H at WrestleMania. He does. They're like, and, and, and Cena's very much the Superman kind of look. Sheamus, Sheamus is kind of pretty, pretty badass. He looks like a character out of World of Warcraft. The Bellas, uh, they didn't even make the Bellas look alike here. It's. Uh, I, I like that. Um, oh, that's the big show. I was like, who the hell is the picture of this? That's the big show. Nice. Yep. Bellas picture, they very clearly have different breast size. Yes, they mm-hmm. did. The details, man. The details are so great on this <laughs> you one. You know what? I've never even noticed that. Do they have different sizes? I. Oh yeah. It, it it's it's an angle on Total Divas actually. <laughs> have you guys seen the Roman Reigns? I've missed it the last couple of years. Damn it. <laughs> hey, they're all yeah, on, I, I, they're on Hulu Plus right now. So. <laughs> Whatever happened to the WWE card game? Still Remember playing it. Game? I spent most of my uh, 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 vacation playing that game actually. That um, game was so addictive, and then they did some sort of update, mm-hmm. and uh, it just got terrible. I think like they, everybody, uh, we, we, this, it's a boring topic. Basically, though, everybody started getting the same cards for like whatever. Yeah, and it just became. Yeah, I've noticed that. I, I've gotten my ass kicked by a gold Ryback way too many times. Um, mm-hmm. But but no, yeah, the, the, the third of the game modes, I, I like when they have the people's champion modes. Um, they started up. Uh, what is it? Road to, Road to Glory. Road or to something. Glory, where it's like something like twenty cards from your deck get used. Um, mm-hmm. That was I, I, I got into that. It, it's this is my Candy Crush. I understand that. This is my quick click thing, and it gave give me a time frame to try to work myself up a ladder. I was so I was so happy that I, I worked my ass off over the weekend and 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 got an ultra rare uh, AJ Lee. Or, or something like that, or super rare, or what? What are the purple cards, or whatever those ones are? Um, and uh, but but it's and it's, I think it's going to be a similar thing. If this is like Injustice, for those not familiar, um, it, it's it's kind of a touch fighting game, um, but you can kind of it also has a little bit of that card collecting thing, much like Supercard does, um, where you level everything up and you can buy new cards and they add power ups and moves to your fighter kind of um i <laughs> i was kind of halfway in the door on the uh injustice version of this and i have a, i don't know I, I feel like i feel like because it's wwe i might just kind of go all in on it um but we'll see we'll see if it works out 
here's the thing about it. They're, they're only releasing artwork, right? Right. We have they not really released any anything. other information. No. And it's working. Yeah. Because if they had released a bunch of information, we might have done a quick blurb on it and that was it. Instead, we're speculating and talking about it kind of in depth here on the uh, show. And we're promoting their other products. Yes. We're talking about Supercard at the same time. Hey, remember the Rockopolis game? Oh, nope. God. Nope. No. Uh-uh. Nope. nope. And I don't remember John Cena's fast lane either. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. They Neither showed those, those off, but those didn't even look good when they showed them on TV. That's true. Yes. Well, I, to be fair, the art does look really cool. Uh, it looks. I, I would kill for Seamus to actually come back in the Rumble looking exactly like that. That'd be great. You know, you know what's going to happen is they're going to go to Royal Rumble, much like whenever WWE 2K comes out. And anybody that has a character in Immortal is going to be like part of their graphic as they come in. I hope so. That'd be cool. It'll be interesting. Actually, no. I don't know if you could do that because they'd look more badass in the graphic than they would in real life. That's true. Versus the game, versus WW2K, they just look uh, crappier and more pixelated and smooth than they do in real life. Yeah, because I mean, look at look at that John Cena outfit. My God, that is very very Superman. Oh yeah, big time. That's hot. That's hot. I mean, That's good stuff. It's, it's, I've never wanted to get a tattoo is. more in my entire life. <laughs> this is not a joke. This is I'm dead serious when I say this. There is a ghost that lives in my garage, and I don't even believe in ghosts, but I swear to God, it's here right now. So if something happens to me while we're talking about this card game, please send help because it's moving around <laughs> over there. And I don't even believe I was on a ghost show for two years, and I don't believe in ghosts, but I think there's something over there right now. I've I've heard something before. And now it's, it's pissed because it doesn't like the way this game's laid out. I don't. <laughs> Maybe I need one of those DVPs. Do you like this new game idea? Maybe it's the ghost of your supercar collection. It probably. It could be. I think it's a Native American. <laughs> 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 I live out at my bushy run battlefield out in uh, Penn Trafford. You know how many Native Americans got killed here? I don't, but a lot. Okay, look it up. <laughs> this got weird. Teacher. This got. Don't chastise me. This got all kinds. We're here of... to talk about wrestling. <laughs> yes, or get off his dick. I yeah, stop it. What do I do with that? <laughs> this is new information. Let's talk contracts. <laughs> You're a businessman, plumber. Good. plumber. I want to ruin any script you've had tonight. Oh, dude. And I don't even have to because that Native American ghost that's looking me dead in the eye right now. Jimmy DeMarco loves the fact that I've seen ghosts before. We need to get him on the line right now because he'd, he'd be freaking out. If you think for one second that this show has a script, you are unfamiliar with this show. It's really Well, just... I know that we're talking points. Like, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. I say we don't talk about any of it. Let's talk about anything. Beers, Screw it. Beers. Whatever. We've been around nine years. We can talk about whatever we want. We talked less about wrestling when we started. Um, anyways, <laughs> we, we, we have been talking about anything for nine years. So Yeah, that is true. <laughs> That is true. Um, WWE has updated their merchandising and non-compete clauses in superstar contracts, according to, in this case, WrestleZone. What do they know? Labar. Uh, following, actually, oh good, he didn't write this one. Uh, following CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio firing in. Uh, we could talk as much shit on Labar as you want. Oh, can we? Can yeah, we? why not? All right, let's do that. Um, well, he didn't write this article, that's for sure. Actually, the source is Wrestling Observer. Uh, so, so obviously, we know CM Punk, there was legal issues, that whole deal. Apparently, uh, one of you guys was telling me that they went to the comic book people that do the WWE Heroes comic book, or whatever the new one is, and, and for the reprints, they're actually uh, uh, replacing CM Punk in them. They're yep. drawing over him. Uh, yeah, for the, for the reprints of the comics, they're they're either drawing him, drawing over him, or just removing him, or, or cutting mm-hmm. him out, or whatever. He, Which... Uh, I, I've never heard of such a thing. No, no. Uh, Ever. It, well, it, it, people have been replaced in like the Mick Foley reprints too. Like they're just like, well, let's just put the current stars out and, and we'll, we'll put out second printing, you know, three, mm-hmm. three years later. Like, yeah, it kind of makes sense too. Um, no, I mean of like Marvel and DC. I've never heard of any, anyone outside of WWE doing this. Right, right. It's, and this is insane and it's a boring topic again. I'm, a, I'm full of boring topics tonight, so we'll just touch it. But these guys are all considered independent contractors. And right. in the WWE, I, I have no idea what political ties they have to get around it. But these guys are not independent contractors. When you have, when you have clauses in your contract 
that are no compete clauses that say you can work here, or you can work there, or, you know, or prevent you from working somewhere else. Or if you have, uh, you know, clauses in your contract that you have to get permission to appear, make appearances. That's not an independent contractor. An independent mm-hmm. contractor is free to do whatever they want to do. Right. So I don't know. I don't know what you know. I don't know if they're offered health benefits or what. But I don't know where that blurred line is. I don't know how it works behind the scenes. But sooner or later, they got to be careful because they keep tightening down and hunkering down on these guys. Yeah. And they're cro- they've crossed the line years ago. Well, and I, I don't know how they get away. With I think it, even but, more so because this says uh, furthermore. Uh, this, this is this is uh, the WWE has implemented a new line in the superstar contracts that forfeits their rights to merchandise profits if they are fired due to disciplinary reasons, right? In which case, Punk and Del Rio officially were right. Um, furthermore, according to this article, there is a non-compete clause that states the performers and personalities must wait one year before working in pro wrestling or MMA again. Mm-hmm. Which is insane for a television yeah. personality, for someone who has to stay relevant in the zeitgeist to not be able to compete uh, in the thing that they're known for. That's crazy. Yeah, that is they are killing careers. Oh, they're killing it. And actually, it's funny because as we speak right now, we not to talk about independent wrestling. So I know that we're not doing that here, but I'm actually booking names for uh, Night of Superstars in Meadville. And it, it kills companies like mine. Mm-hmm. That you want to capitalize on these guys while they're still a big name, and they can make a decent. I mean, it's insane what these guys make for one night, uh, but it's also insane what they draw when they're fresh out of the WWE. Oh yeah. So if you're forced to wait like that, it's just a killer. And they're going back to making, you know, not nothing, but. I mean, and, and granted, this isn't everybody. This isn't like, oh, we let go of Zack Ryder. He got Future Endeavor. And he's got maybe a ninety day compete, no compete. Like they usually do, whatever that case yeah, is. But how can you sign a contract and say, I, I mean, you have to because because WWE, WWE is the promised land. So yeah. it's like you do what they say. Mm-hmm. But how can you feel comfortable signing something knowing that even you piss off the wrong person and they're they have nothing creative left for you, and they're the ones that make the call whether you're let go for disciplinary reasons or not. They could right. always find something. Right. I mean. We're, we all have jobs. We've all, if you've ever read the code of conduct, you can go through it and be like, oh, this, I did this before. Whoops. Or I did, you know, it's, it's just such a, they're putting themselves at such risk, yeah. but they have to, because what else are you going to do? Yeah. There's nowhere else. That is, that is where you work your life to go. Yeah. And, and, and uh, that's where I work. You know, that's my, when I, when I, when I took over and I told my guys, what I feel my job is, is to make our product better to raise this platform of, of your visibility to get you to that next level. And the harder you work here, the more we, you can help me raise that platform. But that next level is the WWE. It's nothing else right now. I mean, you, Ring of Honor, what, I mean, there's bigger promotions around, but yeah. WWE is it, so these guys are stuck. Well, and I think, I think the thing is, like again, I, I, the more enterprising of wrestlers, I think, may look at that contract and say, Eh, maybe I can do it on my own. Looking at what an AJ Styles or a Cole Cabana do these days, right? Um, and go in these other places. Uh, I mean, how many end up going to New Japan rather than WWE, right? But again, how many New Japans are coming to WWE? I guess too. Uh, but I, I think it. I think uh, at a certain point, the more enterprising, like the people, the the wrestlers that have also figured out the business side of things, may say, you know, again, we'll be scared away, you know. Um, that know they can do. I don't know if that's necessarily true. You don't think if so? You have, if you have other resources to tap that aren't wrestling or MMA, look at Chris Jericho. Okay. I mean, Jericho is literally a guy who, if he feels like it, can show up in WWE. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he has figured out a way to make a living off of his name without doing what his name is known for. Right, right. And like, I mean, there are plenty of other guys who could do stuff like that, too, like Mick Foley. Mick Foley's doing stand-up now. He's doing comedy shows. Right, right. He doesn't have to wrestle. He can occasionally show up for a spot to do a commercial, but... You just mentioned two incredibly huge wrestlers from the Attitude Era who also can do whatever they want and get back in Vince McMahon's good graces. Yeah, yeah. 
I think they're special cases. I, I think the, and the difference is what happens when, I, I keep coming to this name, but what happens when Zack Ryder gets fired for doing something, right? What is Zack Ryder going to do? You know, he's probably going to try to go out for movie roles or something, but he doesn't have as much to capitalize on, you know? Um, so, but again, I, that's also kind of a fault of, you know, is the person kind of smart enough to know how to go other directions, right? Uh, John Morrison left and he took acting lessons and did stunt work, you know, Zach Gowan, he did, he did movie stuff and stunt work and he's doing public speaking, you know, uh, you know, it, it, they're doing more than what a wrestling allows them to do. But again, they're not on that McFoley level, you know, but they are making a living outside. Of course, of course, John Morrison is doing indies and, and doing Lucha Underground, but that's not the only thing, you know, and, and this thing, if you are an independent contractor, you know, I deal with this because I'm an independent worker myself, you need to have more than one possible income stream, right? And and that's why you have guys like Cole that are doing these got his wrestling plus his podcasting plus comedy plus this other stuff right um like if you're independent you need to do more than that first thing you were known for and you have to be somebody smart enough to be able to do that especially right now when the industry is i feel every industry goes up and down i feel right now they are either at the bottom Pro wrestling in general is either at the bottom uh, or maybe slightly working its way back up. So what you have is a bunch of guys that overvalue themselves mm -hmm. that just aren't getting booked into independent promotions because you've got to look at it like if I pay this guy X amount of dollars, how many fans will come to see this guy? And it never, in very rare cases does it work out to be you know, the money they want is not going to bring – 2,000 fans to justify what you pay. So they almost have to do something else. And eventually, right now, unfortunately, we're kind of in that swing where these guys are still overvaluing, not, not overvaluing themselves, but based on where the industry is, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't justify paying them what they want until, until that starts going back up. So until that levels out and they start asking for less to actually meet what they could draw, they're going to have to find other ways on the side like John Morrison, you know, to to get a steady income once they're gone from the WWE. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens. Well, uh, we, uh, in podcasting, like to supplement our income with pizza. And we have a partner. <laughs> what? It works. Good segue. And we have a partner in our podcasting pizza needs. And that partner is, of course, Slice on Broadway. They're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, uh, sliceonbroadway.com if you want to find them on the uh, internet places. But you can't get internet pizza. It's delicious. You may want to lick your screen. Um, and you have plenty of options to do that on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram with Slice on Broadway. Uh, they're right on the tracks over here in Beachview. If you're in Carnegie, PA, they're right on the main drag. Even if you're visiting Pittsburgh, there, there's that exit, Carnegie, right there. Go find Main Street on your way out from the airport, you know. Wrestlers, if you happen to be listening, Plumber, you should tell them all to go there on their way into town for IWC I'm open shows. To any sponsorship deals uh, that you want to help me set up. The problem is time. It's like what the I have a family and a job. It's this would be so much more fun if I didn't have like everything else to do. If only, if only, right? But I Broadway wish Broadway Pizza. Ooh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Broadway Pizza, screen licking good. There you go. There you go. Uh, tweet that. Somebody, somebody, tag them and tweet that, please. Screen looking good, <laughs> Justin Plummer. 15 There's a... bucks. Fifteen bucks. I'll tweet it for, to, from the IWC account. It'll hit three thousand people. We need more Patreon <laughs> supporters. Anyways, I can, I can pay you in pizza, <laughs> at least. Uh, but no, go check them out. Let them know uh, you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, uh, on any of those Twitters or Facebooks uh, when you find Slice on Broadway. So, and thanks a lot to them for supporting. It's work podcasting. Sorry, Mike, you're in New York. Uh, <laughs> I know, but it's really, really good pizza. Yeah, I, pizza. I want it in. he's got New York pizza. I well, um, we've had him do the comparison, and it was like, what does this compare to? We had him try slice. We had him try somebody else in the area, and uh, and we got the thumbs up from him. So we got the uh, guy that lived in the Bronx, around the corner from Good Bronxian Pizza, you know. So, anyways. So uh, you might have noticed things are a little bit different this episode. We're switching things around, uh, freshening things up for 2015 for the new year. Uh, and one of those things uh, we had a discussion is uh, remember when. 
Hmm. Am I supposed to do this? Mm. Oh, do I? Is this the song part? Wait, wait. Are we, are we, Sorry, are we, even the slightest bit of uh, uh, letting me know would have been great. Sorry, I'll I just kind of fell into it. Down. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I was actually just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Can we take our a shirts moment. off? Yeah. A moment. Let's let's. Oh, how about this? Okay, mm. Sork, you got the the switcher up. Let's just look. we'll all do our thinky face and we'll cycle through, and it'll be a moment of silence for remember when. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Ready. You shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. (laughs) This is a moment of respect. Uh, LB. The only one that can get away with dead air. LB, LB, uh, you're kind of the brainstormer of this. Do you want to take the rest of this concept from here? Sure, sure. So uh, a while ago, uh, we kind of concocted this idea of remember when, and it would be a question that we um, present to the panel. And uh, the idea was that we would reminisce about the moments that we love in wrestling, the, the things that made us wrestling fans in the first place. Um, just, just kind of in general, good memories. And, um, God, how long ago was that? It was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. It was a few years at least. And, uh, we've all talked about our favorite oil rumbles at least 12 times. Um, oh God, we can't do that again. No. I can talk Royal Rumble forever. Well, I'll tell you what, this might be your last chance. Bring me back um, when you do the Royal Rumble special. I'll make yeah. time. <laughs> because, uh, uh, we, we feel that, uh, remember when has run its course. Um, this is it. We're going to do, this is the last, the final remember when next week, we're going to introduce an entirely new segment to take the place of remember when something that, uh, we hope you're really going to enjoy. Um, so we're going to go around and we're going to talk about our favorite memories of wrestling, favorite wrestling memory, just kind of in general. And, uh, and we're going to talk to the guys we have here and we want, we also want to hear yours. So, uh, you know, once you get done listening to the episode, think hard, and then email us at good times. Good times. Really? Just one? Just the one? Good times. I'm sorry, I'm not using on this end of it. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Tell us what your favorite uh, wrestling memory is. Subject: Remember when? And uh, we'll probably talk about it next week on the show. So, that being said, you ready for this, sir? I'm ready for this, sir. We'll lay it on us. Oh, you, you want my 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 thing? Oh, yeah. My favorite moment ever in wrestling. Your favorite wrestling memory. It doesn't necessarily even oh. have to be something specific. Just can just favorite memory of your life that is wrestling related. Favorite memory of my life that is wrestling related. Wow. Uh, the WrestleMania man. Two years ago. Finally making it to the Mecca. Wow, man. Good one. I mean, hey, where'd you go? Uh, 29. Uh, we, I carpooled out there with uh, Joe Dabrowski. We did WrestleCon, released the Montreal Theory. Wait, what city was two years ago? New York. New York. Well, New Jersey. Well, New Jersey. Oh, oh, that's horrible. You should have went to the Miami one. That was a blast. I know, right? I saw you talk to <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> but that was my time. I finally got to go after all these years. And uh, it was the nosebleeds. It was cold. Uh, but I didn't care. It I was wasn't there. that cold. It was it was kind of cold up there. Um, Were you behind like a giant Empire State Building thing? I, I kind of was. I was behind the set, but it was fantastic when the fire from Undertaker came up. You know, uh, if he would have lost that year, I would piss because we wouldn't have more fire to warm us up in the, up in the nosebleeds. Uh, but still, I, I made it. it. It didn't matter that I was into the nosebleeds. I was there at WrestleMania. I was there amongst one of the uh, the biggest mass of people I've ever been a part of. It was 80, 80 some thousand people, right? Like just just looking and, and, and seeing that mass of humanity in front of me, you know, was was a really I'm getting chills now. I'm getting I'm getting the Hulk Hogan chills right now. Um and uh, it was just really cool to see that, even if it was a little speck in the middle of the of MetLife Stadium. Um, and I always remember it. every time I see, uh, you know, them doing the fireworks spot, you know, at the big, you know, when they're talking about WrestleMania, you know, and, and, and I, it's, it's the MetLife one, you know, I, I, you know, I'd say I was there for that, you know, just like, uh, you know, previously it would have been the Royal Rumble in New York and Madison Square Garden, the the mecca, you know, of meccas. Um, uh, but uh, they did this definitely be set out, you know, and it's really cool to say, you know, I was there for that, you know, um, and got the experience. I hope they get to another one. So, but again, we need pay- more Patreon supporters for that to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, what about, what about you there, Mad Mike? 
Now you're in a city with all kinds of chances for moments in person. I don't know if that or something else. Uh, uh, not only that, I I kind of worked for WWE. That's true. Like that, too. that theoretically should be up can, there too. Can can I put in my request for my favorite wrestling moment for you? Sure. My favorite wrestling moment for this is you. Highly unorthodox. I know. I know. We're we're off script. <laughs> we're completely off the script. Plumber fucked us up. Screw it. Um, my favorite Mad Mike wrestling moment is four out of four. My favorite wrestling moment is when Mad Mike received a future endeavored letter from WWE corporate. You oh, are great. the only person here who has officially had it. Now we've talked to several people that have had them in the past. I'm sure. Um, but <laughs> but yeah. I actually still have the email, and it does say, "We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors." Like it eventually I am printing it out and putting it in a frame. I was actually going to see if I could contact someone and get it printed out on official WWE letterhead Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that would be amazing. Um, just so I don't miss these guys in the chat, I do. I do. I, 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 we'll, we'll roll around to everybody else. Oh wait, wait, I'm sorry, Mike. What is yours? Uh, I'm sorry. (laughs) All right. You know what? Um, I mean, I could pick something that I've seen live because I've seen a lot of really cool shit live. And this doesn't have to be a live thing. This could be no, live, I know, yeah. and it's not going to be. My, I think my favorite wrestling moment is lifting Chad the Shad on my shoulders oh, wow. while Madison <laughs> Square Garden chanted at him Edge. Like, I honestly think that's probably the coolest moment I've ever had related to wrestling. I think secondary to that is when uh, the Asian family got a picture with him, and I think pretty much thought he was Edge. <laughs> well, that that whole that whole like experience because I remember he was Such posing. A weird sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he was posing for the pictures and everything, like doing doing the hair pull, doing the spear, and Doc Remedy just tapped me on the shoulder. He said, "We'll lift him up." We're lift, we're lifting him up. I'm like, what? Then he he reached out. I'm like, I guess we're lifting him up. <laughs> we lifted Chad up our shoulders, and all of Madison Square Garden, filtering out from the Royal Rumble, was just chanting Edge, Edge, and he threw up the double horns, and it was fantastic. Like it was just so much fun, and like I've seen a lot of cool. I've been to two fucking WrestleManias for Christ's sake. Don't we have and video Matt, of that? Didn't didn't we? Didn't we YouTube that or something? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna look at that. It's probably on my account. I'll see if I can find that later. Um, uh, re- real, real quick from the chat. Uh, I, th- th- I again, I just don't want these to get buried. Uh, uh, Alex Carr says favorite wrestling member memory Wrestle Reunion 2012. Made a bunch of wrestlers. Saw two great shows that weekend. Wound up on the DVD of the PWG show a uh, number of times since he was front row. Uh, Carlin says Jen's Jen Carlin's favorite was uh, riding in Ultimate Warrior's limo with Jimmy Hart and her dad driving to take them to the airport in Erie. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Matt Carlin says his favorite has to be last year's Rumble, meeting and interviewing Stephanie McMahon, hanging with the Mayhem crew, and then witnessing a surreal night of wrestling action and revolt that, by the way, got featured on the Batista DVD. Um, <laughs> Riz says, <laughs> I don't want to repeat myself on my first memory because Taker versus Taker kind of stunk, but it would have to be going to Ring of the Ring, King of the Ring 98 because, you know, that moment there... That moment where time stood still. Ken Shamrock yeah, winning King, the Royal King. Rumble over The Rock. <laughs> 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 um, uh, Plummer, what, what about you? What's your favorite wrestling memory? And now, I, I don't know. You're you're involved so much in it, so I, I don't know. Am uh, I, is there a way I can click something to see what's actually on camera? No. No, no. I, absolutely not. Unless, unless well, you bring I up I used to be able to. Way to downgrade. Well, well, Google updated something and killed all my drivers for the oh. video system. I'm oh, sorry I about that. I my nose. All right. All right. Actually, all right, hold on. I started writing a list because this question makes me nervous. I feel like I've answered it a bunch. The lead-up and the actual pay-per-view of Survivor Series 1991, specifically the uh, Ultimate Warriors versus the Perfect Team. It was Mr. Perfect and all three members of the Demolition wow. versus uh, Ultimate Warrior, Texas Tornado, and the Legion of Doom. My first ever wrestling match that I watched was a lead-up to that. Uh, it was Saturday night's main event, which was just the ultimate warrior in the Legion to do versus the demolition. And so that's what got me into wrestling. So, of course, that's one. Uh, the whole Jake Roberts heel turn uh, stuff that he did with, with uh, the that, ultimate warrior and making wow. him like, be yeah. buried and this and that, that stands out as just cool as shit. Uh, 
Hogan and Flair at the Civic Center, uh, or the Mellon Arena, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Ric Flair used brass knocks and won, and I was probably like, I don't even know what I was, but I remember bawling my eyes out because Ric Flair beat Hulk Hogan. And then uh, a second referee came out and reversed the decision, and Hogan won, and I cried out of happiness. Was that a house I swear show? my dad put me on his shoulders, <laughs> and I went to take a picture of Hogan, and he pointed right at me because uh, we had floor seats. So nice. that was something I'll never forget. Uh, last two. Can I just do like 50 top 50? How long do we have? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, IWC you've got Aftershock. about seven years to remember when. So you're really just getting them all in now. IWC Aftershock. I got to do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, more than I ever imagined I could do. Uh, it's just unbelievable. But the one thing that, that really stands out was actually being put in Roddy Piper's sleeper hold, which uh, I'll never forget. And then him dropping an F-bomb and me having to bleep it out of the video. And then finally, <laughs> uh, getting to smack Justin Labar in the face so hard that when we went backstage, he had an ice pack on his mouth and the blood just dripping down the front of his shirt. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wow. And the spear was pretty cool, too. But, uh, yeah, that was – that's probably it. Yeah, and, it's, you know, of course, celebrating in the ring with, uh, with Dalton and, and, and Matt uh, Hardy was a blast, too. So they're all – it's a five-way tie. <laughs> it's actually a 30 way tie that will stop at five. All right, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> now, did you hit him harder than uh, than than Brodus Clay did a, a couple months ago? That's the question too. <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, I hit him as hard as I could. Good <laughs> 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 answer. Uh, what else are you supposed to do? Did, uh, did he have to call his mama? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Wow. Uh, a little bit inside, uh, inside baseball on that one. Uh, uh, Pop a lunchbox. Since you're yes, the instigator of this, what's, what's your yes. favorite moment? And I'll get to the chat room. Well, uh, uh, to, uh, to anyone who's listened to this show for any length of time, this is kind of well-trod territory for me because I'm a sappy bastard. Um, so uh, my favorite memory in professional wrestling um, is uh, any pay-per-view that I went to see uh, at a bar with my grandfather when I was young. Hmm. Uh, that was, uh, he's the reason I got into wrestling in the first place and going to those shows when I was a kid, getting so excited, uh, watching the shows at the bar, you know, me and a couple other kids jumping up and down, going crazy, uh, while the adults, no doubt, you know, sat in the back and laughed at us. But, um, uh, those are, uh, the best memories in professional wrestling for me. Awesome. Awesome. And from the chat real quick, uh, Wheel says his favorite was talking uh, was talking to and working with Bruce P- Bruce Pitchard, uh, aka Brother Love, here earlier this year with RWA. Uh, Bobby F J Town uh, being at the Royal Rumble and hearing Rey Mysterio and Batista getting booed out of the building and the barbershop window the the moment that got me into wrestling. There you go. Uh, the barbershop window. Uh, before we go to break here, real quick, uh, well, hey, this is usually the time we talk about PittsburghWrestling.com, a lot of digital downloads and stuff available there, and of course, uh, including, hey, some stuff that you're on, including what we just discussed, you slapping the crap out of uh, Justin Labar on Winner Takes All 2014, uh, available on digital download and DVD over there. Uh, so so IWC is hitting the reset button, and even for the guys that maybe aren't so much in the indie wrestling, there's a little bit of mainstream action happening here. Uh, what's happening? You're the new owner. What can we look forward to as the future of IWC in Pittsburgh, or if we're checking it out uh, online or on video otherwise? I want to be different from what IWC has been while still maintaining the same uh, quality of wrestling. You're going to see, when you come live, you're going to see an increase in production value when, they, when you're there live. Uh, we have a bigger, a bigger budget now, but I'm still going to be smart. You know, I'm not in this to lose money, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm in it for fun. I know I'm, I'm not going to become rich off of it. Um, I heard the ghost. Right, <laughs> God damn it, every time. Uh, heard it. <laughs> but but January 24th will be my first show, so I, I hope all of you guys can make it out just to support because uh, you know it's it's so stressful, it's so nerve wracking. I didn't think I would be in this position so soon, but when opportunities arise, you you got to pounce on it. Um, so yeah, IWC is hitting the reset button. I think what we're doing is really cool. Every title on the line against a random opponent. I try to think to myself. Uh, it's, some people suggested to me. Just reset all the titles, make them all vacant. I didn't want to do that because I thought that was just a little bit too much. That's been done. So I thought, 
what are the what are the most exciting moments in wrestling? And I thought when you count down from ten, you know, at, this, at the Royal Rumble to see who's mm-hmm. going to come out next, uh, you're like you're you're just like ready to go. Or when they used to do the WWE uh, draft lottery, which was pretty cool, you know, cycling through and letting the computer generate it. And I thought that's it. We'll leave the titles on everybody that has a title, but they will be facing randomly generated opponents. So there's going to be ten to thirty seconds of you know, cycling through superstars on the screen and nobody's going to know who's going to come out next. And if things go according to plan, I'm going to have guys backstage that have never been backstage at IWC before. Uh, and, and my goal is just to be fun, to be unpredictable and to be a little bit more fast paced in the development of, uh, events, I guess we'll say than we've been in the past. And then, uh, of course to, to try to get some bigger names in, uh, on a more consistent basis. And I wanted to start off with something that has been sitting out there for years and nobody ever did it. Uh, it's just a natural feud that never came to an end. Colin Delaney and Tommy Dreamer in the WWE ECW. Everybody knows the story about how Tommy was his mentor and uh, Colin eventually turned on him and then was and then was gone. So there's just a loose end there. And we have this, we have this, you know, situation right now where Colin's trying to right the wrongs of his past. He went after his old tag team partner, and then after he defeated his old tag team partner, he went straight to Tommy Dreamer. This will be in an IWC ring on January 24th. The first time ever that Colin Delaney and Tommy Dreamer have faced each other since they were in the WWE and were due under extreme rules. So I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited to see what names we can get in, throw in the the hat and see who comes out for this this random draw stuff so uh i hope you guys will all be there support it uh expect a a, a lot of a, a lot of changes while maintaining the same quality that iwc has always had awesome go check it out iwcwrestling.com and we'll be i'm sure to talk about that on the indie wrestling or indie mayhem show uh leading up and and, and after that uh as well so go check, check it out that as well uh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com hey we'll be right back with uh, i don't know this format's all screwed up now uh wrestling mayhem show email probably yeah <laughs> this is the iwc world heavyweight champion international superstar mexican celebrity and filipino supermodel shima casanova zion and you're watching a wrestling mayhem show. We are back, guys, and let's sec- start the second half the only way we know how with the fan mail. Right? Right. Right? Sure. Right. right. Yeah. Right. The new way. It's the new way we know how. The new way we know. Oh, I like that. The new way we know how. Yeah. Actually, let's start with the voicemail in a very rare appearance mm-hmm. by uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, oh, I broke the thing. Uh, Mrs. Carlins. Hello, Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is Mrs. Carlins, and I have a little uh, problem with Raw last night on the way that um, that they're treating Dean Ambrose. How much does that man have to take of getting beaten and just, 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 just screwed with by that Crazy. wacko psycho played out. I'm sick of it. Go back to the Louisiana Bayou where you freaking belong and get the hell out of here. I'm sick of you. I'm bored. Go away, Bray Wyatt. Anyway, back to Dean. And then you got, like, Roman Reigns, who's the second coming of Christ. And Samoan Christ. Pretty much sure that WWE should get their money back. Uh, for the acting classes that they send him to because uh, they're not working. Uh, they're not popping the ovaries like they usually I'm are. I'm sick of it. I'm sick <laughs> of wrestling. I'm done. Oh, Party's canceled. No. no Royal Rumble party oh. at the Carlin's house of fun and shenanigans. Good day. That's such a shame. You just took their kid to his first ever live show, and now she's done with wrestling. <laughs> I, I think. I think. Did Jen Carlin's just turn heel? I think <laughs> heel turn, wife, wife, my wife, heel turn. My wife. Yes. I am more devastated than when Shawn Michaels threw Marty Jannetty through the barbershop window. That was insane. And did she say acting classes? What the hell is she talking about? Acting classes. It's wrestling. <laughs> there's no acting in wrestling, right, Plumber? <laughs> Actually, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, there's some insight for you. Um, but hey, it was. Uh, It'll be okay. I mean, everything will be fine. It, we'll still have your pay-per-view party. At, the, at least you get to see me and Riz sitting and playing with toys. Like last time. Phrasing? What? Nope. Oh, nope. That's uh, no, I think yeah, it's... Okay. 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 Alright, let's get into the rest of the... Oh, you guys with the emails. I love this. Love it. Dustin, getting at us. Uh, Mike, you're going to be feeling a little bit of this, I think. Uh, dear mayhem, dear nation of mayhem, just finished up Wrestle Kingdom Nine. Great show with some excellent mediocre matches. Oh, excellent two mediocre matches. Uh, looking at you, Jarrett. There yep. you go. I was very <laughs> pleased to see Go to Godo, Godo, Godo. Oh, you should read this one. Do you want me to just finish reading? All right, hold on, hold on. Hot tag. Oh, there it is. Hot tag. Hot I was, tag. I was very pleased to see Godo and Shibata walk away with the big win. Enjoyed the Styles vs. Naoto match, and was left with such happiness after seeing Nakamura and Ibushi and Okada vs. Tanahana Cena. That's what he wrote, not me. Uh, <laughs> overall, the show got a 9 out of 10 from me. Question! Alright, I think these are mostly about Wrestle Kingdom, so I... Nope. Unless you guys want to pretend to answer. Um, Go for it. Is it just, is it just me... Or did Stryker carry JR through the first few matches? Nope, Ross you were drunk. Th- Next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has he has the follow up. He followed up his own question with a statement and a question. Uh, Ross seemed either a bit lost or just not up to date with things until the Sakuraba versus Suzuki match. With Stryker being so versed and well informed, my question to you is: Who do you see as the smartest man in wrestling? Hmm. Justin Plummer. Next question. <laughs> Well, um, I I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I will say that I think Stryker did carry JR a little bit because... Incorrect. You were also drunk. Next question. Well, no, no. <laughs> the first match, because JR can't call the moves as quickly as Stryker can. Mm-hmm. And that first match was fucking fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you think it kind of caught him off guard? Day. Yeah, I think so. I think I think it did because... It looked to me like JR just had a couple of facts about each guy and was just going based off of that and was just calling the action. But mm-hmm. some of the moves, like they even said, some of the moves were just so quick. Do you feel like JR is going to complain about how quick some of these guys wrestled as he typically <laughs> does on his podcast? Oh, yeah. he it, They were working way too fast. Yeah, those Japanese really guys, those Japanese boys got to slow down a little bit. I will <laughs> say, working Matt Striker has been with IWC a few times, and then we did the... Uh, Steel City Con uh, mm-hmm. table together, so sat for a few hours. He is actually like at the top of his game. He is witty mm-hmm. and, and quick thinking, one hundred percent of the time, even when he's tired. Like right. I like to cons- consider myself to be witty every once in a while, but this guy is just like always uh, just high energy at the top of his game. So I believe that he would have carried Jr. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's possible. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, like, really, say? Once Jr. got into the swing of it, because. Yeah, I remember Stryker's been doing Lucha Underground and stuff like that. He's still been calling shows on the regular. JR hasn't called a wrestling show in at least maybe a year or so. Yeah, yeah. And plus, I mean, like, Stryker's used to... UFC, but that's completely different. And Stryker's, like, drop. I'm sure whenever he gets booked they and they have a chance, they drop him into, like, IWC uh, to announce a few matches. And so he's used to kind of dropping into... A different situation, right? Uh, with guys he may not know as well, and, and can handle it a little more than Jr., who you know he knows the story of everybody in WWE because it's written for him, right? Uh, you know that, that alone is a different situation uh, for sure. So, um, oh, and um, and uh, the question was, keep, keep, he said, keep in mind, I'm not asking who's the smartest from a business sense, but who's the biggest historian of the genre. Oh, I would. Yeah, that, I think you know we don't think about it because of you know he really kind of is played out in TNA, but I feel like Tanay, Mike Tanay, might be up there, or maybe that's just my impression of him from old WCW uh, introducing me to Luchador's days. I still think it's probably Jim Ross. I, I I think it has to be like just because he couldn't keep up with some of the stuff going yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. But but just like general the general smartest guy in wrestling, man. Well, I mean, because you're not going to find someone who's an expert on every aspect of wrestling. But if you no. find someone who's a, who's got a lot of knowledge on most of it, 
I think that's got to be JR. I think, can I say the most, uh, the smartest proactive guy in wrestling is Triple H. Mm. Because uh, just for seeing what he's done in NXT. Um, it's that it's like a wet works project in a tech industry, right? Uh, that, they, <laughs> that they've kind of done down there. Yeah, Mike, you, you kind of get what I'm saying here, right? Yeah. Like, 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 like they are indeed this whole development concept and he headed it up and you could see it's that. A, it's a very beta version of <laughs> exactly. Like, it's, it's a, it's, it's raw beta. Yeah. It's, it's, raw, raw, it's a raw beta. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but I mean, at least like on that, on that level, you know, um, yeah, I don't know, because I, I feel like maybe the smartest, smartest guys that actually bring you, like, uh, the smartest guys booking, like, are quiet, and you don't know where that came from, you know, or or, or anything like that. Um, man, this kind of goes to that question we had with Joe Dombrowski a few weeks ago, too. Um, or wait, 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 that, was, that could have been a car ride, never mind. Uh, <laughs> a lot of conversations with that guy. Uh, but anyways... All right. Uh, well, second question. Um, I was d- a bit displeased with Kenny Omega when he was first brought to the Bullet Club. Bullet Club. However, after seeing that match with Taguchi, I was very impressed by his ability. Is there someone you've seen around the Indies that you weren't impressed with by their first few matches, only to be proven wrong later? Oh, that's tough. Oh, I know somebody. I, I, I just... You know what? I'm going to go Adrian Neville. Like when I first started watching NXT, I know that doesn't really count as an indie. Yeah, yeah. But I was not impressed by Adrian Neville, and now I am quite impressed by Adrian Neville. I'll well, second that. He's like changed his game up a little bit. Plumber, what about you? Anybody else uh, that's kind of uh, raised their stock with you? This might be a very political question in your in your. Position. I know. I don't have the answer. <laughs> uh, I have one. You know, as Sam, I would say if you, if you remember Sammy Guevara, uh, of course you. If you're an I, if you've been around IWC, you do. He's a guy that built a fan base very quickly uh, based on what he can do. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say I was ever. I ever didn't think what he did in the ring was good. So I don't know if I'm answering the question right. But when you when you first saw the guy, he was kind of small and young looking. Yeah, maybe I'm just old looking, and I think he looks young. But uh, we've had him for a few months bring him up from Texas and I hope we can get him some more because he has won over the fans uh, every single time he's been there. So that's, that's who I'd have to go with. Okay. Okay. Well, LB, you got one? I do. Uh, <clears throat> I, I was, I was jumping in. I was going to try to give Plummer more time to think. Um, uh, this is, I think because I, I started watching them very kind of early in their careers and seeing how they've evolved. So I don't know if this is exactly what he's asking, but um uh, and now I'm drawing a blank. God damn it. <laughs> I have, facade. I'm, facade? Okay. Facade and, uh, and Jason Gorey. Um, just seeing them get better and better and better mm-hmm. uh, as professional wrestlers and also developing their character and developing who they are and becoming more comfortable cutting promos and better and better in the ring. And um, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's been a pleasure to watch these guys um get to the level they're at now which is a very high level they're both phenomenal wrestlers so i guess those would be my picks well and i know i have very specific answers for this one i know i've talked about it on the bm show like guys that i've come or even like just talking with people people that i've come around on opinions of um but uh wow that you weren't impressed with that first wow you know what i kind of in the same vein with, with you johnny gargano um, mm. I, I guess we're trying, kind of thinking most improved wrestler in this case, but I remember him as flag tights, Johnny Bananas, you know, teaming up with Facade, <laughs> young, young Facade days and seeing the stuff he does now is just absolutely incredible. You know, um, uh, he, he's got a, a, a super long way, uh, as far as that goes. Um, but man, I know I have plenty of examples. I'm going to kick myself later. I'm going to have a whole thread of this when I, when I think about it later. I think on Logan Chulo's one, even though he's not an indie guy anymore. Right. He's a guy that you saw like come from nothing mm-hmm. to, uh, really getting his, you know, really getting a good look, getting in good shape, starting to cut decent promos yeah. for being a quiet, yeah. soft spoken guy. And, um, his in ring work, even in the, the four years or so that I was with IWC, mm-hmm. uh, 
you, you could see a huge difference. I mean, that guy just exploded. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of old news now, but he, he'd be a good one to fit that category. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Well, actually, just like pro mobility, uh, Shima. Shima is doing great work in TNA. Mm-hmm. Like, because I remember, like, I haven't been to many IWC shows, but the ones I have where he's done some mic work, it was like, oh, okay. I mean, he was always good in the ring, but the the stuff that he's doing with TNA now, like, mm-hmm. I like it a lot. He's one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, from from the chat room, Wheels is actually saying uh, Jimmy Nuts and Aiden Vale. Uh, of course, you know they were uh, with RWA. I for, uh, both. Uh, I think both Wheels and I were interested to them as the Pocket Rockets. And seeing what they're doing now it, with IWC, uh, with VOW, with a few other places. Hell, uh, Nuts is, was featured on uh, one of those Ring of Honor um, uh, up, up-and-comer things uh, that they did. I, I forget what they're called. Uh, Future of Honor or whatever it is. Um, you know, you know uh, those guys, both those guys are really kind of uh, coming their own and coming to a character, coming into a personality and, and just being tremendous in the ring, you know. Um, uh, certainly. So, and watch out for Dalton Castle too. Again, it's a tough question. The, the first part of the question kind of ruins it. Like, who mm-hmm. are you disappointed with at first? But yeah. seeing them improve, because I wasn't really ever disappointed with anybody. I'm yeah, like, they could yeah. do better than I could. But, yeah, I wasn't necessarily uh, Dalton, disappointed with those yeah, guys. But yeah, yeah. But Dalton uh, just wrestled last Saturday in the Ring of Honor uh, Top Prospects Tournament. Nice. I think against Ashley Six. So nice. Um, Wondering if it's only a matter of time before, you know, we, we stop seeing him around. I mean, that, I'm, He's I'm, another guy. I'm trying to think as a, a, an example, Justin, and maybe you can think of this. Like, I, I know there have been times, especially with IWC, where somebody is brought in and there is like people kind of like it was brought in. And, and I could tell by the, by the, the sense that it, this was supposed to be a big name. And I didn't understand why, I guess, is, is kind of the situation I'm looking for for an answer. Um, but then like after maybe a match or two is like, okay, I get it. Right. And I kind of came around to him, you know, like some of those guys, like, like, okay, here's an example. Uh, Jimmy Vegas. I was never around to see Jimmy Vegas in the Jimmy Vegas heyday when he was with punk or anything like that. Right. So when he came back, they were doing founding fathers. Like I didn't get what the big deal with Jimmy Vegas is. And after a bit of time, I'm like, okay, this is, this is what he's about. Like it, it took a bit for me to kind of get, get what his vibe is right in the ring. Right. And I know mm-hmm. he's a longtime IWC guy and everything like that, um, but uh, but but the, that's that's kind of stuff that's kind of hitting my brain for something like that. Um, I don't know. I've always loved Jimmy Vegas because I like when I go to I I, I didn't go to a lot of indie shows in my life, mm-hmm. uh, but when you go, you just hate seeing guys that look like I, I don't know. They say like ECW is great because you could see guys that looked like you in the ring being successful, but mm-hmm. I don't want to see that. I want to see guys that are larger than life. I want to see guys that legitimately look like they would whoop your ass yeah. in a bar yeah. and that's jimmy so jimmy vegas to me and like i said i've only been there for four years yeah but he's always yeah. been that grizzled oh yeah oh giant yeah guy so i've always been a big fan of his yeah uh, yeah based on look alone yeah yeah he, but he, i know you're trying to i'm trying to, i could probably think of a few but it's probably not appropriate to talk about <laughs> it <laughs> certainly certainly all right let's go to the next question here sir okay um this Wednesday will be the live debut of Impact on the new network. Hmm. TNA has done a decent job of hyping up, uh, hyping this up with the latest attempt of being the announcement of re-signing talent before Jim Ross interviews Dixie for his podcast. My question, how would you rate the job they've done so far to make this move matter? Of course, we, we have to wait to see the product, but with Dixie's media blitz, which he thinks Robert Roode should have been a part of, uh, Destin America, Destination America's announcements, and even the likes of Stry- uh, Matt Stryker and Jim Ross talking about on Wrestle, um, Wrestle Kingdom 9, wow. I feel there's a general curiosity for this Wednesday, even if it's been buried by the majority of loud. No, no, wait a minute. So they mentioned Impact on... They, me- they briefly mentioned Impact. Okay, okay. They briefly mentioned WWE. They mentioned... Like, Stryker, Stryker had a statement where he was like, between New Japan, All Japan, um, Pro Wrestling Noah, Ring of Honor, TNA, NXT, WWE, it's a good time to be a wrestling fan right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was basically how it was brought up. And Jim Ross did mention that he was interviewing Dixie Carter to plug his own shit. Okay. But, uh, okay. but I mean, I guess I should really talk about this first since I'm the Impact guy. Mm-hmm. Um, They had a real chance here to kind of revamp 
their whole product. I don't feel like they've done that. Mm -hmm. I feel like they've put a, a, a different logo on it. It's a coat of and, paint, right? Yeah, it, and not even a, a good coat. It looks like they're just putting another coat of the same coat that they had before, but it looks <laughs> different because it's newer. Right. Like, And all the re-signings, I don't need to know as a consumer of your product that, hey, guess what? These people weren't signed. I don't need to know that. Don't tell me you're re-signing half of your already existing roster. It is a little weird. They, including some of your champions. Like, I don't know. That just seems off to me. Like, tell me something new that's coming. Besides Josh Matthews as an announcer, they have not mentioned one thing that's new. We're mm -hmm. getting a... Um, we're getting a rematch on the first show. We're getting a rematch on the second show. Mm -hmm. And we're getting Lockdown, which they haven't mentioned anything for because they will have taped four or five shows then, so they can't tell us anything about Lockdown. Is Lockdown, like, happening this week? Lockdown is happening on Friday, so it's being taped. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, locked, and I actually may be going to the tapings on Thursday, so should be interesting. Yeah. And Destination we'll, America. Um, and and we'll, we'll have, uh, I guess it'll be interesting, uh, we'll, we actually do have, uh, we spoke of it before, but uh, DJ, DJ Z, Zima Ion, Shima Zion, wherever you may have picked them up from, um, uh, he'll be actually joining us on Indie Mayhem show next Tuesday. Uh, so I'm hoping to, you know, pick a little bit of like, Hey, how's the TNA going? You know, and uh, well, mostly we're going to talk about indie wrestling is still very involved with IWC and stuff. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and I, I'm glad you guys are having him. He is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk like, talk about a guy that stays grounded and true to his roots. Definitely. He does. Definitely. Even I was worried. Like when I took over for Chuck, cause I knew he helped Chuck out a lot with finding new talent. I'm mm -hmm. like this. You know, we don't have the personal relationship that they did. Yeah. But uh, he's been in touch with me a lot, uh, giving a lot of advice. So you guys have a blast with him. He's so cool. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be great. He's, he's, he's been on the show briefly, <laughs> uh, doing an impression <laughs> of Baby Batista. Baby uh, they, they dropped it. Uh, I think him and Fasad and DeMarco dropped it after a show. Uh, a few years ago, and, and, and that's the only experience we've had with them on the show. Sorg, at least. Sorg mm. um, when he comes on, you should have uh, someone be. Oh wait, he's not going to be in studio, is he? No, no, no. He's he just. Oh, left I was going to say ago. he needs to impersonate Drax now. <laughs> maybe and we'll get that. Maybe we'll get that. Have someone be dancing Groot in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that, baby. Um, but anyways, uh, but but I, I, you say who watches Destination America? Uh, Missy's in-laws do. Uh, they love the ghost programs on there, apparently. So I got to see a lot of the promos the first couple of days out in California. Um, I think I think they look exciting for what it is. If anybody's on Destination America, never seen that before. Uh, although one, you know, interesting statement. And this is this is a, this is an aside for this. Uh, but mentioning to the in-laws, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is on that. I, you know, I've been hearing about Destination America, and I told them about like when we read off the programs on the show a few weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, it feels like everywhere I switch to, there's pro wrestling on anymore. It's like, really? <laughs> but think about there's that. I saw there was, a, there was an ad for this Wrestling With Death reality show that's coming mm -hmm. up. I think AMC maybe. Um, uh, you got Lucha Underground. You got this. You know, th there is a lot of wrestling on. You know, and and very visually uh, right now, Ring of Honor uh, as well. I don't know if they were in their market, but it's out there. Um, but I think again, we'll see. We'll see if they can get buzz. You know, we'll see. We'll see if it's business as usual coming up here on Wednesday. I mean, that's going to be the telling thing. You know, uh, they're not going to get yeah. numbers. They're not going to get some crazy big spike. From this, well, uh, they, they might for the first show because it's live. I I do not expect Wednesday's show to beat their last six months of ratings. Oh, I don't either. Spike. But no, just it, it's impossible. So as far as that goes, but especially because they're going on Wednesday, yeah, and then they're switching over to Fridays. That's weird. That is really yeah, it weird. Is. That, that that doesn't help things at all. Uh, that definitely doesn't help things at all. So, I don't know. We'll see what it is. We'll see what it is. But All right. And uh, to finish the, uh, the email out, he says, uh, that's my time, guys. But I'm going to throw out three predictions since he wasn't able to contribute on the drunk show. Uh, one, TNA is that what that's called now? It... 
<laughs> what? Is that what that's called now? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I thought uh, every show was a drunk show. No. God, I wish. <laughs> uh, TNA will put on at least one show that Eamon says will, was good in 2015. Hmm. GFW will announce a main roster flagship by AJ Styles. Oh. And that that's an interesting prediction. I can and, see it. Uh, the third one is Hideo Itami will be in NXT for entire 2015, barring a house show or a one-off here or there, if not released. Ooh. Wow. So he doesn't think he doesn't think the future holds bright for uh, Mr. Itami mm. on NXT. Wow. I guess, guys, keep bringing me that top quality that has your head spinning more than three bottles of Petri wine. Regards, Dustin. I love that nice. we brought over the Petri wine meme to this. Well, I mean, Sorg. They took time to bring you good wine, so we should at least take time to acknowledge that they took time. All right. I want to try to do this email, though. I do see one uh, very significant Japanese name. I may just toss for you for the names here, Mike. Matt Carlin is our friend of the mainstream media. Says, Happy New Year, Mayhem Crew. Uh, as as you may have guessed, my wife is at red no, alert over Dean Ambrose's lightest loss last night. And I'm a little worried, too. But it has nothing to do with Bray Wyatt and everything to do with Seth Rollins. If Dean doesn't at least attempt sabotage uh, Seth is, Seth's, Seth is, yeah, eventual uh, money in the bank cash in, is he a failure in your eyes? He has to stop it, right? few other quick thoughts i wanted to believe in the ascension a little promo spots before their debut on raw were so absurd even i started a twitter account to celebrate them at Ascension quotes on twitter i did not realize that was him it's it's tremendous but as is often the case wwe has abandoned all subtly sub the sub the Subtlety. Thank you. Subtlety. Thank you. Subtlety. Thank you. Thank you, word people. Uh, No more ride the lightning. Now we're getting obvious promos about the Road Warriors and Demolition. Dude, we got the joke. You didn't have to explain it to us. They were chanting LOD on their debut match. Um, I (laughs) fell in love with a Japanese wrestler over the weekend. Shinsuke Nakamura. The king of song strong style. That's very nice. Uh, he won my heart in his match at Wrestle Kingdom 9. His opponent, Kota, Kota Ibushi, was, was awesome, too. You're like my translator. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I knew a little about both of them going into the show, but their match uh, about... But their match blew me away. Uh, I, I don't want to say uh, too much more other than encourage people to check it out. New Japan is worth your time, effort, and money. Your mainstream media pal, Matt, sent from my iPhone. Yes. Uh, we got another one from Alex Cars at Power to the Smarks on the Twitter. Power to the Smarks.com. Go check it out. Uh, WK9, totally what I expected. Hello, 10%ers. Totally not what I expected. Oh, totally not. what. Maybe you should read this one. Uh, Hello, 10 percenters. It's your boy Alex Cars ready to talk about an amazing show I watched this past weekend. The wrestling was buzzing about Wrestling Kingdom 9, and that is what I watched. Three hours later, I realized that they were what they were talking about, New Japan, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom 9. What I watched was WK9 Presents Puppy Palooza, the mm-hmm. biggest IP review this side of reality. The main event was a grueling kennel in the, from hell match as Terrier Funk defended the WK... Is this a real thing? Defended the no. WK9 world title against the undefeated <laughs> underdog. Yeah, I watched it. It was sick. It was a clash of immortals. The roughest match in years. I'm sorry, LB. <laughs> In the end, oh, under- he wrote an email to make me kill myself. Awesome. In the end, <laughs> underdog streak. I was I was hoping for one of these. Came Go to ahead. the end and tear your funk return. Other highlights include the debut of the PXT daring Adrian Pitbull as he took this is this is a long joke on former Inter Kennel champion Howell Ziggler. <laughs> as well as the last match of the best in show tournament but to find out more you'll have to visit power to the smarks.com this week wait what the hell just happened when the review goes up this is why this is at the end of the show now guys uh, well while you're there be sure to check out my friend jay's review of that japanese show that happened putting this by, sp- by the way by the way uh spoiler alert for the for the best in show tournament you know who won Mm. Bark Lesnar. Oh no! Cut his microphone. Oh, no. Cut his microphone. <laughs> 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 Alex Cars. Cut smart his microphone. Back is smart, Mark. 
Oh man, uh, Ciro, do you uh, w- LB? What, do you want Ciro's? Yeah, email can here? I read an please. email, sword? Please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Mm. WMS. WMS, it is I, the future of the WMS, the Ricky Banderas, the Sorgs, Judas Messias, what? the U to LB's so. I am the Aztec <laughs> in Aztec Warfare and the NXT motherfucking fan of the show, and that name is Zero 2 k Did he just steal my rapping email gimmick? Maybe. You, you don't write emails anymore. You're on the show. Yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, I unfortunately couldn't stay for the second part of the WMS December 2 Dismember episode, uh, so I wanted to email my bold predictions to the 2015 Wrestling World. Numero one, Neville Oritami. One of these two men will leave WWE due to not having a clear future in the WWE and booking nightmares. Wow, that's the second person to think that Tommy might not stay the whole year. Wow. Uh, that might actually, I might actually be on board with that. Um, not that I want it to happen, but I could see it happening. Numero two, by December 2015, Vince will still be overlooking Raw, but thank you, Mike, Triple H will have Sorry. taken over SmackDown production. So mark those down. In other news, nothing really happened in wrestling worth talking, except the best holy effing shit wrestling company made its way to the U.S., Seriously, if you didn't watch New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 9, first of all, look yourself in the mirror and realize that you have been taking the wrong life decisions. Wow. Then go watch it, cancel all plans, and go watch it. Oh, yeah, and Del Rio debuted in Ring of Honor, and tomorrow is Aztec Warfare. Don't miss it. Don't miss TNA's return either. Oh, can I just say how fucking disrespectful a name like Blue Pants is? At least call her Leva Levitson or Bailey Bates or She Stan Stansky. Seriously, WWE, <laughs> wow. fuck you. Wow. She Stan Stansky. God, now I'm all worked out. Watch some Lucha Underground, friends. Zero out. P.S. I'm officially starting Fly Zero to the 10th, an- 10th anniversary party fund. Any donations will help. There you go. Can we make She Stan Stansky a thing? <laughs> she Stan Stansky. That's good stuff. I like it. Oh, boy. What's going on? What's going on with PRK? Mike, you want this one? Sure. To the WMS Nation. What in the name of Magnum TA did the WWE do to deserve this? The authority fired Ziggles, Eric Rowan, and Ryback for no good reason on the night to appreciate Super Cena. What is wrong with them? You got two Intercontinental Champions and one who isn't getting the pink slip instead of Super Cena. Inter- what is okay. wrong? WWE should have let Cena turn heel or have Cena get the pink slip and go to TNA. <laughs> WWE needs sure, to change sure, that'll fix mind. everything. Honestly, that'll fix everything. It's just Cena and TNA, Destination America. He's going to be hunting ghosts and he's going to be doing barbecue and car shows. He already loves cars. This is what needs to happen. To be fair, even. TNA wouldn't know what to do with John Cena. No, they wouldn't. They no, they wouldn't. They they drop him. They drop him down to his la- his rapper gimmick and team him with DJ Z because that will make sense to them. Oh my god! I, fuck! Now I want. Although that, although George. I kind of want that now. I, I kind of really want that. Now. A phenomenal idea. <laughs> god damn it! Plumber, book I that. That now. So oh. we're looking for writers. You want you want in? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Bobby F. J. Town's looking for a job. But Mad Mike. Anyway, anyway, back to the email. WWE needs to change their minds and pretend it was fake and rehire them instead. Also, what did Big E and Adam Rose do to end it? They got two people from Adam's entourage, but instead it was Cesaro, Salad, and Duck Kid. WWE, change your mood next week. See you guys later, <laughs> PRK, aka Mr. Techwood. Guys. Oh boy, guys, let us know what you think about the format changes. If this is the right place to put these, I have a feeling it is. Um, at that note, uh, tell us, guys, what did you learn from wrestling in this past week? And uh, and we'll get out of here so we can talk some indie wrestling. Although we talked about a bunch of it here, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, LB, what did you learn? I learned that uh, I absolutely, positively have to take the time tomorrow to watch Wrestle Kingdom 9. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because any t- any time a show gets buzzed like this uh, from my trusted sources in professional wrestling, aka the people that we have on the show, um, it ends up being either like NXT R Evolution, which I absolutely loved, um, uh, 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 Lucha Underground, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. So absolutely, I'll go check this out. No question. Clear some time. It's a long show. Mm-hmm. I can do that. Awesome. Mad Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, well, I was going to say something I learned from Lucha Underground, but fuck that. I learned that Paige ducks and covers whenever there's pyro backstage at wrestling events, and she has a hard hat, and it's amazing. Oh, my. Total Divas was fucking awesome. I'm serious. <laughs> Paige is the best part of that show. By far, she would have to kick Daniel Bryan's puppy in order to lose that spot. Oh, I can't wait to get to that part of that. Justin Plummer, <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week? I'm sure you're learning a lot about wrestling lately. I, well, I thought I knew everything about wrestling, but I learned the most important uh, thing about wrestling of them all. And that's that everybody watching or not watching should be at Court Time Sports Center on January 24th when IWC hits the reset button. Tommy Dreamer versus Colin Delaney. And who knows who else is going to show up when we push that button. IWCWrestling.com for tickets. January 24th. I learned that just right now during the show. (laughs) Excellent. And, of course, uh, I learned... um... I learned once again, Hulu Plus is very much the supplemental content to WWE Network. Um, They have Total Divas. I'm catching up with it, guys. I don't have to wait for this year later, two year later thing that WWE Network's been doing with the show. Uh, Watched entirety through season two, like this past weekend. Um, And uh, I'm on my way to to catch up. They're putting the new episodes on there. But again, you do, I believe, have to be a plus subscriber to it. But you got to think about that. It, other than like actually watching Raw live, you pay the nine ninety nine plus the seven ninety nine for Hulu as a cord cutter. You have all the wrestling you need uh, as far mm-hmm. as WWE goes. Uh, I don't think there's anything missing at that point, you know. Um, and also, I think NXT still runs on on Hulu. So if you're like, I don't want WWE Network for whatever reason, um, Hulu Plus will at least get you the NXT stuff. Although they probably you won't get the live specials. I think is the only thing. But if you want to kind of go dip your toe in this and check it out, that's the way to do it. So, guys, Sork, thanks. We can, we, Sork, we have a whole bunch of stuff in the chat. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. Okay. Hot, Wheels, Hot Wheels learned that he loved New Japan Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riz learned that you can never trust a Titan and a Jabberwocky, which is absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Carr has learned that Terrier Funk is the most over canine in professional wrestling. Uh Bobby F. Jtown learned that Wade Barrett should have broken the news to Natty about the special brownies because I'm afraid I've got some bad news. And Matt Carlin's learned that not even the promise of a John Cena appreciation night can keep LB awake till the end of Raw. Nope. That's correct. Fell asleep. Mm-hmm. Yep. At one point, I was falling asleep, and they're like, you're going to miss the John Cena thing. And I think I jer- made jerk-off gestures and fart noises. <laughs> and it was funny. Um, I believe yeah, on the wrap-up really? last night, uh, Sorg actually got a sleepy robot for the hangout that you were in sleeping. Yeah, yeah and everybody nice. left, and it's sitting there, and it was just you sleeping by yourself. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's accurate. Hmm. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I, live, I go hard, Sorg. I go hard. And then I fall asleep early like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Panel Riot this week. I'm talking about an excellent comic. Check it out at PanelRiot.com. Listen to uh, Panel Riot every week. Tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mike. Listen, I greatly listen, I think I, I think I mentioned you on the show this week, actually. You did. I like the mention, but it's a very good show, even without mentioning my name. Thank nice. you. Nice. I meant, you I meant the show that we're about to do. Yes. You want to lick some pizza on your computer screen. Where are we going for that? That's at sliceofbroadway.com. Thanks for thanks for calling back. Snozberry the... tastes like snozberry. Slice of Broadway tastes like slice of Broadway. Just lick it. IWCWrestling.com. Plumber loves you on Twitter. There you go. Check out all the Aftershock episodes. Watch them all. Watch some They're DVDs. gone. It's over. You can watch them all now. You'll, yeah. you'll be able to catch up. It's concluded. It's an entire box set now. Filthy completionists. <laughs> Mad Mike, he does Rambling Movie Minute with me. It's the Mike and Mike show this week. We talk about Arrow and the Flash. We make yeah, we do. passing comments about Total Diva marathons. That's and about I it. got Sorg into Entourage. That's right. I might be watching Entourage now. 
wear off on the time. I don't know. Uh, of course, I got a lot of stuff going on at SorgatronMedia.com. Wrestling stuff there, too. It's kind of cool. Sorgatron.com is my personal blog. I've been uh, talking about my trip uh, to California and other kind of stuff. Uh, sometimes about wrestling there. A little bit. Not so or, much. More or, tech. Did you enter a video game tournament to play Super Mario Brothers 3? No, but when I landed, I said, California. Um, anyways, uh, and, and I, I, I legit bought Tupac's California Love to have on my phone when we landed. <laughs> I spent the whole dollar twenty nine. That's adorable. <laughs> you know. Um, anyways, uh, uh, with that, hey guys, yo, please wrestlingmayhemshow dot com four one two two zero six wms zero. Good times. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. Check out all the stuff. Big thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for the tweets and the show notes all night long. Thank you very very much. We appreciate seeing you back again in 2015. And uh, please join us. Uh, who knows? We got big stuff coming this year. Big stuff. The big ten years. Ten years of this show coming up in a year from now. But still, you know, we got some planning to do. We gotta get zero out here and stuff like that. Thank you, Justin Plummer. Thank you, everybody. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.